Escape room employees. What is the stupidest thing a customer has done to escape? I run a tech camp thing for junior high aged kids and we have them do an escape room puzzle. Basically the box in the middle of the table has 5 locks, one for each puzzle, that has its own colored ring attached to it. Once you solve a combination, you bring the ring to the game master and you get the next puzzle. Simple enough right? Never have I seen anybody do this in the 2 years we have done this puzzle, for both kids and teachers. But one kid this year managed to unsnap a ring from one of the locks and picked every single one of them, and got the box open without solving a single puzzle. I went to one last year and the organizers were giving us the rules beforehand, including things like don't pull up the carpet, don't dismantle any electric devices, etc. We were laughing that people would even think of doing that, and then they told us that wasn't the worst of it. The rooms were in an old tenement building with fireplaces. Apparently one guy in the past was positive there was a clue hidden behind the old, boarded up fireplace so he managed to break through and climb up the shaft, all before staff could intervene. They had to call the fire brigade cause the guy got lost in the maze of shafts. The true escape room has only begun. Ho ho, time to turn the tables. The stupidest thing I've ever seen in an escape room, the final challenge slash lock was a locked cabinet consisting of a coiled up bicycle lock. The problem was that the bicycle lock was basically just a big 3 foot loop, and they'd only run it through the handles of the cabinet once, so there was more than enough slack to simply open the cabinet. Within the first 5 minutes of the game, somebody in our group just walked up, opened the cabinet, and we were out. I'm on my office's party planner committee and a while back we considered going to an escape room for an office party. My co-worker casually let it slip that he was no longer welcome at the escape rooms in our greater metropolitan area. Turns out he kept taking doors off the hinges and breaking them, because no one said it was against the rules. In a prison themed escape room that I work, there is a part of the game where players are handcuffed to a bench, and solving a series of puzzles unlocks access to keys. The chain that connects the two handcuffs is screwed into the bench. One woman decided it was best to unscrew the screw from the bench itself, and proceeded to excitedly urge her friends to do the same. Her hands were still locked into the cuffs but she was also swinging around a 5 inch nail connected to them as well. I can answer this. One of our rooms has a bed in it with white sheets. There was this group who was in the room working on the last puzzle, a logic puzzle. There's a sheet of paper in the room that's full of facts about a murder that you're trying to solve. The group wasn't quite getting the puzzle, so I typed up the white sheet of paper in room 3 will be a lot of help, so the group runs into the room and starts tearing all the white sheets off the bed and I type, not the bed sheets, so they start pulling the pillows out of their sheets. I then reply the sheet you write on, and lo and behold they grab the room's marker and start drawing all over the bed sheets. They didn't escape. That sounds like something straight out of a comedy show. There was a very pregnant lady in the group. We asked her if she was at risk of going into labor at any time, but she said she was fine. We let her in. The entire group was getting upset because they weren't doing well. They were in the hardest room we have, it's always a big deal if you make it out. They kept asking me for the code they needed to escape, and I had to keep telling them I couldn't say what it was. They had to discover it. So pregnant lady took out the water bottle she had turned around so she wasn't facing the camera, and poured some on the floor. She screamed that her water broke, and I needed to tell her the code so they could get out and go to the hospital. I guess she forgot we have cameras in several places in the room, and we saw exactly what she did. So I went into the room myself and explained that she was free to leave, I would just escort her out and the rest of the team could continue. She really thought that by having her water break, that was a free pass to get the escape code. Once a group disassembled a portable AC unit hoping to find a key. There wasn't any key. From that moment screwdriver were forbidden. But the best team I remember was the first team that ever played. We made a big, enormous, gigantic mistake. We forgot the entire detailed instructions inside the room, right at the entrance on a table. They found it immediately, they started reading it. They clearly saw that every combination, every puzzle, every piece of history and every piece of furniture, but they didn't realize it was the complete walkthrough. 
and in some unknown way they failed to escape. We did an escape room and we found a screwdriver in the room. So naturally we started trying it out on things doorknobs and screws that seemed out of place. Nothing was working, waved the thing in front of the camera which the guy didn't see because it was dark. So we figured silence meant we had to keep trying. We finished 2 minutes over time and we asked him what we were supposed to do with the screwdriver. And he just says what screwdriver, they left it there during maintenance and we just wasted a lot of time taking apart and mostly putting back together his escape room. We actually almost dropped a giant painting on the other side of the wall. Did an escape room where they said several times, do not take anything apart. We figured they'd had something happen like the AC unit you described. They were very adamant about it. We got stuck for a long time and finally asked for a hint. They told us to take apart the flashlight. I'm still not over it. Not an employee, but I often ask employees about any odd rules they have. This one room part of the goal was to identify the murderer. Also relevant as the story location was Tokyo. There was a bluetooth lock on one of the doors, and so there was also a phone. It being a murder the escapees thought to call 911. The staff was smart enough to remove the sim card, but didn't realize you can always call 911. So they connect to the real emergency services. The operator gets a call that they think is a legit emergency, and the escapees assume that it connect to the game master. Everyone was very confused when they said there was a murder in Tokyo, and the operator says that's on another continent why are you calling me? Escape room employee here. I like my job, but have seen some of the stupidest people on earth come through. Here are some examples. People who find keys, exclaim, it's a key, put it in their pockets, and forget about it. They don't make it out. Had a woman who would insist on pulling her group members away from correct solutions, so that she could waste time with incorrect ones so that she could be right, to the point that I actually insisted that she shut up via the messaging system. She didn't, they listened to her, and they lost. It's amazing how many times a day I type if it's unlocked, open it. We have a key in a box in one of our rooms that you get out via a specific tool, that you find in the course of the game. For some reason. Instead of intuiting that there was a tool involved, two women tried to use tampon applicators from their bags, unused, for this purpose. Had a guy who sat in the middle of the room and counted the ceiling tiles, convinced that finding the number would help him. I told him it would not. He lost. There is a room that necessitates putting an actual puzzle together. It's a 50 piece puzzle, it's the first clue, a child could do it easily. Took one couple 40 minutes. They looked for nothing else, despite being urged, they did nothing else, they just worked on the puzzle. They lost. Oh there are so many. I have both hosted games and managed escape rooms. I have seen it all. People who cheat and bring in tools. People who physically break objects and play them when confronted, yelling matches, people on drugs, but the worst are the bad parents. The dumbest people were always the dads or moms of large families who took over the games from their children, and didn't let them play or ignored them. Sometimes kids were just left unsupervised while mom and dad played alone, guess they couldn't get a babysitter, but most of the time some really smart kids could see things the adults did not, and sure enough mom and dad ignored their input and got stuck overthinking everything. It was so satisfying to go in after they had lost and tell the parents they should have listened to the kids. The smiles from the kids made it so worth it, and the parents couldn't do anything but pout. My friend runs a place with 4 escape rooms. One guy got frustrated in the last chamber and just started messing with wall panels, assuming they were all hidden doors. He ended up pushing one and finding that it seemed to have a little bit of give to it. It was definitely not a hidden door. He went straight through it and put a very large hole in the wall. My friend and I had plans that night and he flaked on me because he had to fix the wall. F the guy that broke through it. This is a really frustrating part of doing escape rooms. If you start messing with something and it's got a little bit of gif, is this a clue, is it a secret? Is it just loose because of the nature of cheap or temporary construction? Or is it loose because it's been used so frequently? I've done a few escape rooms and the ones I failed were because I overlooked what ended up being a clue slash solution because I thought it was just poorly constructed. I mean he got out though. 
technically correct. We all know that's the best kind of correct. He still messed up my evening. Wrong hole messed up the OP's evening. We played through this demonic themed escape room and the guy running it would speak as the voice of Vade, through the PA system. He'd give us hints when we ask for them and would narrate story bits when appropriate. At one point there's a little fountain that pours out holy water. There's a little bottle to collect the holy water. But they only trigger the fountain enough for us to get a little holy water in the bottle. Then we're supposed to figure out we need to drip some holy water into a small hole in a box. Instead we try dousing the holy water on just about everything else in the room. Nothing's working. Then my girlfriend's brother says oh, maybe we have to drink it, and he chugs the rest of the holy water. The voice of Vade jumps in and says, do not waste the holy water. Worked a zombie themed escape room within a haunted house where you had to find the cure before your time ran out and you became a zombie. On part of the haunted house is a locker room type deal, and you have to walk through the stalls to open up into the room itself. Girl finds the cure in a toilet tank, gets so excited she football spikes the tank lid. Lid of course shatters, and we get less than 5 minutes of reset to clean up her mess before the next group comes in and shreds themselves to ribbons. Good times. The first time I did an escape room, the setup was that this little girl had died and was haunting her old bedroom. The guy giving us instructions literally had to tell us, if you happen to have a knife on you, please do not stab the bed. Apparently a former patron had ripped the mattress open with a switchblade to look for clues. We created an escape room for our library, and one of the decorative props was a potted plant. One group thought there was something inside the pot, and proceeded to pull the entire plant out, roots and all. There was dirt all over the floor and the poor plant was in shambles. In their defense, the theme of the room was Harry Potter, so they probably were thinking it was a man rake, in which case they should have used fuzzy pink earmuffs. Thankfully the plant was needing to be repotted anyway, so my co-workers and I split it up and took them home. My little piece is doing great. Not an employee but a player. I was working a puzzle on my own on one side of the room, and this tiki torch looking thing keeps falling down while I'm working on something else. I keep picking back up so it's not in the way. Finally I get frustrated and slam it into this wooden stand with a hole in it. It makes a loud bang and part of the stand comes off. I think I've effing broken it and quickly put the piece back into place and go back to my puzzle. Of course it was supposed to open, and there was a clue inside. We failed the room. Obligatory not an employee but many months ago my friends and I did an escape room. It was a King Arthur style room, and at one point you get a sword by lining up a group of statues. You were supposed to stick the sword in this device in the center of the room, however we were having so much fun swinging it around we didn't realize that. Excuse me customers, your session is over you cannot stop us for we are the chosen ones. I was participating in my third escape room. In the first two rooms I had played the answers to puzzles were very heavily influenced by the use of black lights. Early on in this room, we found a little button that when pressed and held emitted a bright purple light, which I instantly and confidently exclaimed was a black light. I took it upon myself to scan the entire room for hidden clues. I was thorough, I scanned over everything, the walls, the ceiling, parts I could reach, every prop, and every clue we found along the way. I found nothing. We came to the point where there were seemingly no more clues to be found and we were stuck. There was a small fin in the corner of the room that we hadn't used to help us progress, that had been turning on and off seemingly randomly the whole time we were there. I decided I'd give it one more look with my black light. The fan was on, I pressed the black light button, the fan turned off, I pressed the button again, the fan turned on. I was oblivious to my folly. It took my friend to point out that my black light was in fact a switch for the fan. The combination to the next lock was written on the blades that were only visible when the fan was turned off, with the fan switch. It was then that I realized that I was completely useless to my team for almost 30 minutes, while I was meticulously scanning the room looking for hidden ultraviolet clues with a fan switch. There are a pair of footstools in one of our rooms that we mention in our intros are there for you to sit on or use as a table, and that there are no clues in them so please don't take them apart looking for clues. 
I began adding the phrase, we can't afford another set, as a joke the first time we had to replace them from someone not listening. I now say, we can't afford a fifth set. My friend thought the key was in this small wooden box, and ended up getting mad and smashing it, there was no key, just employees telling us to leave. How did they fit in the box? The room had electronic components, so there were electric wires that were tied down but looped around the room. One Friday night, someone tried licking them, just in case. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more daily Reddit videos.